Hi, this is Sherry Culver. I'm an elementary teacher here at RVA. And today I wanted to share with you um, this information on the stages of writing development. All children go through um, a predictable sequence of stages as they're learning to write. Um, just as they go through predictable stages of development in things like learning to talk and learning to you know, sit up and roll over and crawl and walk. Um, there's also some predictable stages and signs of when kids are going through these stages for writing development. And my hope is that um, I this will kind of let you know what to expect at your child to be doing at each, at each age. And also I'm hoping that it will give you some, I can give you some ideas on ways that you can support your child in whatever stage they're at and help them um, continue to grow and get to the next level. Do you remember how excited you were when you heard your child speak her or his first word? You eagerly accepted whatever variations and simplifications your child used. For example, ba meant bottle. And you encouraged that by saying, yes, you want your ba? Um, you want your bottle? Your delight encouraged your child to try many new words. Through modeling, accepting, elaborating, listening, and echoing, your child learned to speak. In the same way, we can encourage children as they learn to write. Emergent writing um, are a child's first efforts to create and use print in a meaningful way. And it can include all of these, scribbling, drawing, copying, printing letters, using invented spelling, and message composition. These are some stages of writing that um, the way that they are labeled um, is the way some authorities on this subject um, have labeled all the different stages. You might also see them called something slightly different um, if you're reading about them. First of all, kids are preliterate. They're not writing yet. And there's two stages of that called drawing first and then scribbling. Early emergent where they make letter-like forms. And then the emergent stage where they do random letters or letter strings. The transitional stage where they start to, to write with invented spelling and fluency when they're writing and using conventional spelling. So preliterate drawing. In this stage, um, children are use, using their drawings, um, you know, people, trees, the sun. They're using their drawing to stand for writing, and they believe that their drawing writing is, is kind of their way of communicating a purposeful message. So when they show you their drawings, you know, read them as if they were writing on them and have them tell you what they wrote about, what they what they drew. The second preliterate stage is scribbling. And I want to distinguish this from just, um, this is not your, you know, one and a half year old, two year old who is just clutching a, a crayon and making random marks. This is the kind of scribbling where they really are trying to imitate writing. They, they're intending it writing. They might go left to right. They hold and use the pencil like an adult. Um, I've seen children at this stage who will fill blank pages of paper up with strings of scribbles going left to right. Um, and, and I can tell the, the concepts of print that they have already gained if they go left to right and if they go from the top of the paper and, and move on down the page. Scribbling is a child's approximation of writing. It can be compared to a child's babbling as an infant. Both babbling and scribbling need adult praise. So just as you encourage your child to babble, it is very important to encourage your child to scribble messages and compose stories. Okay, the early emergent stage when they're making letter-like forms. In this stage, the shapes and writing 
resemble letters, but they're not actually letters. So you might see some that look <laughs> pretty similar. You can see on this um, on this one, the child has written kind of kind of could be an L or a two or a V. They look like like poorly formed letters, but they're just making lines. Um, an interesting fact, I thought it was interesting, is that children's scribbles and emergent writing take on the characteristics of the printed language in their culture. So scribble writing in Arabic and Hebrew, for example, looks very different from scribbles in English. If a child's growing up in a culture where um, written um, print is, is, does not go horizontally across left to right, um, their scribbling will reflect that. Next, the emergent stage where they're uh, writing just random letters or letter strings. Uh, oftentimes, the first letters that they're putting together, stringing together, are the letters from their own name. Um, they often will use mostly capitals, and there are a couple of theories as to why this is, um, one of them being that there's more capital letters in the print in our environment around us. Um, other times people will say, you know, these, they might be a little bit easier to make with straight lines. Um, a lot of the capital letters are more more straight line letters than the lowercase ones. But I think I think it I might probably believe it's because a lot of the alphabet um, toys, games, puzzles, um, if you have magnetic letters, they have capitals. And so children are just more exposed to them. They might write the same letters in many ways, and they're just long strings of letters in random order. So by this stage, your child's writing may look more like printed language, though not readable to you. Your child has begun to recognize that words are made of letters, but he is not particularly concerned about which letters represent the sounds in the story. This is similar to babbling, it has the inflections of language. Let's skip that one. Uh, then the transitional stage, which is when your child um, is using invented spelling. Students will create their own spelling when conventional spelling or correct spelling is not known. One letter may represent an entire syllable. Words may overlap. As their writing mature, uh, more words are spelled conventionally, and perhaps only one or two letters are invented or omitted. And at this stage, children um, might like to label their pictures. If they draw, and then they will write something on there. Uh, they like to make lists. You can encourage them to do that. And they reproduce numbers, proper names, and other words. So they may see words that they try to copy um, that they see frequently. There are three um, sub-stages in the transitional stage, and this is really kind of around the age of kindergarten. This is happening, sometimes a little before, and sometimes this is still going on at the end of kindergarten into first grade, but there's kind of three sub-stages. The first stage, um, the child represents words using only the beginning sound of each word. So your child is just learning to associate each letter with the sound that it, it's supposed to make. And when they first start to write, they'll write the beginning sound. So for the word bat, the child would write a letter B, and that would stand for bat. In the second stage, uh, the auditory discrimination skills have become more developed. They're starting to understand that there's an ending sound and can hear it and identify it. And they will be able to start writing the letter that represents the last sound in the word. So bat might be spelled B-T. And then the third stage, um, the child uses the beginning and final consonant sound and starts filling in the vowel sounds. And this progression, I see it in almost every student as they're learning to write. Um, being able to write the first sound, then the first and the last sound, and finally the middle sound. And that writing that middle sound and getting the correct vowel often carries well into first grade and, and even a little bit beyond because those short vowel sounds sound so familiar, or sound so similar, I should say. And I see it as a stage of 
progress in their development when they put a vowel in the center of the word, even if it's not the correct one. They understand that there is a vowel sound there. They're not sure if it's an A, A, or letter E, E, because they're kind of close. Um, but they, they know there should be one there, so they put a vowel there as a, as a placeholder. So the first transitional stage is similar to when your child said her first words. And as parents, you understood and accepted these words and encouraged them. You will see many efforts to make the connection between letters and sounds of words. The second stage is similar to the stage at which a baby begins to string sounds together. It shows that your child now knows how writing should look. I'm going to show you some examples of these three substages in the transitional stage. Here's the first one where um, the child is doing mostly the beginning beginning letter, beginning sound of the words. So um, he has written, I almost, oh, he's got an ending sound there, got, a G for got, S for struck, by lightning, he's got two of the sounds there, riding my bike yesterday. And he's hearing that S when he says yesterday. It's the sound that's standing out to him, so he puts an S. Then in stage two, where they're beginning to hear more of the ending sounds, you'll see some of those vowels. <laughs> Looks like this child has learned the letter A, and maybe he doesn't really know the other vowels very well, so he's just choose to use A as his placeholder vowel in just about everything. So the translation is uh, the dog sled ran into a polar bear. And then the last transitional stage, whether you use an invented spelling, most of the words are going to be correct, but some that are um, have a more um, advanced phonics rules in them, like not using a TCH for, um, or using, actually I guess this is supposed to be the word bunch. Me and my dad saw a, ho a whole bunch of geese they made a V. So I can look at this and I can see, hmm, this child knows that that uh, letter E at the end of the word makes this E sound long. Kind of remembers that there's a Y at the end of the A, but didn't remember that it's an E and not a not a A. But you can see what this child this child has learned some rules and is applying them in writing um, and has several of them correctly and spelled correctly. And then finally, uh, fluent writing is when they're using almost all conventional spelling. And of course, as adults, we still uh, do not know how to spell everything correctly. So this is kind of the, the last stage that goes on. So this child has uh, knows how to spell a lot of high-frequency words correctly and uh, knows a lot of the, the words and has spelled mostly correct. So here's a chart that gives you approximate ages for each stage. And you can see that there's a pretty, well, about a two-year span range um, that's considered appropriate for, for each of these stages. And just because your child reaches what, these stages at the, at the latter end um, rather than at two, he, he reaches it at age four, just like the other developmental milestones like walking and talking, just because there are peers, they have peers who have started to do this, it doesn't mean that he's not eventually going to be just as good at writing as the next child, because it really is a developmental thing, and, the, and children develop at different rates. But eventually, they will get to the point where they will be fluent um, writers and, and can do that, even if they develop a little bit slower. So how can we encourage and support writing development at each of these stages? When kids are in the preliterate stage of drawing and scribbling, provide them with a variety of writing tools and paper. And over the years, um, as a teacher, especially when I was in a brick and mortar classroom, um, I could tell the students who had been allowed to experiment with markers and crayons and sometimes a parent would tell me at a at a conference I you know I don't want them to color on the walls or get it on anything so I don't let them have those things and I certainly understand 
you know, not wanting to um, let them have free, free reign to do whatever they want with them, um, it's still good to give them lots of experiences to, to use them and become familiar with holding different writing tools and, and having paper to draw on. If possible, provide a child-sized writing table or a desk so that they can start having, you know, a, a good comfortable posture when they're drawing and writing. Ask them to tell you about what they have drawn or written. And um, if they are mostly drawing, take dictation from them and have them tell you um, what they wrote, what they wrote about or drew about, and then you write their their thoughts down for them. In the early emergent and emergent stages, encourage them to label their drawings, read alphabet books, play with alphabet toys such as puzzles and magnetic letters, and then ask for their permission and write the words conventionally by their words. So if they come to you and they've written something um, kind of like those examples I showed you earlier, you know, ask their permission. And as you write the words correctly, you can say, you did a great job of writing that phonetically. Look, you had the B and the T for the word bat. Um, so you figured out the beginning sound and the ending sound. Um, at the transitional stage, when kids are using that phonetic spelling, or sometimes you'll hear it referred to as temporary spelling um, or invented spelling, or there's actually a, um, it's a book out by a particular author where they call it kid writing. Um, and so when I was using that program in my classroom, we used to refer to what the kids wrote as their kid writing. And it was, um, you know, it was praised for what they could do, but we also would talk about this is the, the um, I can't remember the term I used to say when we would write it correctly for them. But encourage them, encourage your kids when they're at the stage to sound out words and write the sounds they know. Have a word wall or a personal dictionary of high frequency and sight words. Encourage them to write and draw cards for birthdays and holidays. Allow them to participate in activities that involve writing, like helping write something on the grocery list or to-do lists in your home. Have a family message board. Let them see you writing and share what you're writing when you're writing things. And refer to it as phonetic spelling to help them distinguish it from standard spelling. I think that's the term we used, which is correct. So you can say that's an ex excellent phonetic spelling of that word. Look at all the parts that you had right. Ask them to read back to you what they have written. Rather than tell children how to spell a word, ask, what sound do you hear at the beginning? What letter makes that sound? Can you write that one? Do you hear any other sounds? What letter do you think makes that sound? And kind of lead them through the process little by little uh, so they can see that it's, um, they can start to do that on their own with sounding out and writing the sounds that they hear. When children become fluent writers, are able to write a lot of words with conventional spelling, and can do it pretty independently. Promote letter writing of all kinds, such as notes to the tooth fairy, pen pals, uh, letters to a grandma, um, any kind of writing that you can you can encourage them to do that's that's authentic and real to their lives. Um, encourage them to do that. It's okay to point out a writing error now and then, and let your child correct it. We want to be careful not to over criticize, but what I always suggest is. Um, when kids are writing, when you know that they know a particular sight word, um, be insistent that they that they write it correctly. Um, if if they've written it incorrectly, but you know that they really do know how to write it, and they maybe were just r rushing. And also those words that are very uh, phonetically um, sound out sounded out words, and you know that they, uh, if they gave proper thought to it, they'd be able to do it. So just um, we don't want to be discouraging them by being too overly critical, but it's okay to, to point out things now and then um, to encourage them to, to think carefully. Remember that good writing means more than correctness. Focus on the meaning more than the mechanics at this stage. Encourage writing in a daily journal or a travel journal. If you, if you take a family trip, it's an excellent time to do a little uh, journal for a trip that you're on so they can talk about what they've um, done each day. 
and a great way to take some lessons on the road when you're traveling in the car. Um, journal writing can be begun when children are little. I used to do it with my kindergartners. Um, it's a great emotional and creative outlet, and it gives us insights into children's thoughts. Be sure to give children an opportunity to share what they've written. So um, with kindergartners in a, in a classroom setting, I had the kids write in journals, and then they always had a chance to have a little conference with myself or another adult to tell about what they have written. And it was amazing the stories that they would tell um, that we had no idea what something was going on in a child's life or that they were thinking or worrying about something. Um, but be, by giving them the chance to have a journal where they could write about whatever they wanted to um, and then tell us about it, we find out you know kind of what's going on in their heads. And so it's it's a really valuable activity that way too. Encourage, journals encourage fluency in writing because spelling, grammar, and punctuation are not a concern. It's a good independent activity for when you're working with your other children. Focus on the content, the message. Give the writer total control. A journal is a, is a private thing, it's a personal thing, and it's up to them if they want to share, but they have, should have total control over what they want to write in a journal, um, depending on the type of journal that you're, you're having them do. And it can be a combination of pictures and or words. Um, this is a list of some of the resources that I referred to and have used in um, people who have done studies on the stages of children's writing. And if you're interested in getting any more of those, um, send me an email and I can forward some resources and some information um, so you can learn more about this. Thank you for viewing this presentation. I hope it was helpful and have a great day.